All right, this is the Samsung wireless soundbar. It's 290 watts total. It does have a wireless subwoofer, and it has the soundbar that gives you 2.1 surround sound audio options. On the back of the television, I have three ways I can interact with the audio out for my soundbar. This is the audio out for the auxiliary. This is the audio out for the digital, which is optical fiber. Connecting the television to the soundbar directly using the auxiliary or the optical is the easiest way because you bypass connecting other devices to the soundbar. You simply connect those devices to your television using your HDMI connections, your coax cable connection, or your component or composite if you have that on your television. The way that I have the soundbar connected to my television is using the optical in on the soundbar and connecting it to the optical out on the television using this optical cable. And so I'll go ahead and connect those. Notice that the optical cable has a specific shape and will only go into the input one way. And here's a close-up of the optical cable connected to the optical input on the sound bar. And here is a close-up of the optical cable connected to the output on my television. And now I will turn the power on to the sound bar. and use my source button to select digital in which is the optical cable and it's just that easy to connect the soundbar to the television using the optical connection now I will connect the soundbar to my television using the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable and you may be familiar with these because they're used with mp3 players and phones and other audio devices. I'm going to locate the audio out connection on the back of my television. And now I have connected one end of the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable to the television's output and I'll connect the other end to the input of the soundbar. Now I have located the auxiliary end connection on the soundbar and I will connect the 3.5 millimeter cable. And you can see that the soundbar is now connected to the television using the auxiliary cable that was included with the sound bar and you see how easy it is to connect this straight out of the box without any additional cost. Now I'll turn power on to the sound bar and select the auxiliary input by pressing the source button. And now the auxiliary is set on the sound bar and you have the connection between the sound bar and the television. And now I will connect my 3D Blu-ray player to the soundbar using the optical input the same way that I did my television. The optical connection can be used with this soundbar and any other device that has an optical digital out, including consoles, cable boxes, DVD players, or other Blu-ray players. On the back of my Blu-ray player, I do have an optical digital audio connection right here which looks like the same connection that was on the back of my television and on the back of the sound bar and I will take my optical cable and connect it to the port on the blu-ray player and next I will connect this to the sound bar and here's a close-up of the optical cable connected to the optical input on the sound bar and now I will turn the power on to the sound bar and use my source button to select digital in which is the optical cable and now I will connect the blu-ray player to the sound bar using the HDMI connection and then putting the HDMI connection from the sound bar to the television so I can get audio and video and first I will connect my HDMI cable to the HDMI port of my desired device in this situation it is my Blu-ray player, but this can be done with a console, PlayStation 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 
or the Xbox One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Three Sixty. So you have the first step of connecting the HDMI cable to the Blu-ray player. And next, you want to find the HDMI in connection on the soundbar and connect the cable from the Blu-ray player. And now you have the connection between the Blu-ray player or any other device and the soundbar. And now you have to use a second HDMI cable and a second HDMI connection. This one is labeled HDMI out and it says TV in parentheses. This will link the soundbar to the television. And now I have the HDMI cable connected in the out of the soundbar and it will be going to the television. And now I'll take the other end of the HDMI cable and plug it into one of the connections on the back of my television. And now I have connected this. And here's a picture of the soundbar where you have two HDMI cables connected passing through the soundbar into the television. This will allow your Blu-ray player or other device to play sound through the soundbar and get audio and video out from the television. Now you can power on the soundbar and select the HDMI input for the soundbar. And now I'll turn power on to the soundbar. And I will use the source button to find the HDMI connection. And now you have your connection completed. To access and adjust your equalizer and subwoofer, simply press the equalizer subwoofer button on the remote. And you're instantly taken to treble, bass, and subwoofer. You can adjust the treble, bass, and subwoofer by pressing the forward or reverse button on the remote. By default, the treble is set to zero, and it can be increased to positive three and decreased to negative three. To change from treble to bass, you would just press the button again, and now bass is highlighted, and change with the forward and reverse buttons. And you can adjust the base to positive 3, or you can decrease it to negative 3. And the same can be done for the subwoofer volume. This can be increased to positive 6, or decreased to negative 6. And now that all this hard work has been completed, you can enjoy this Samsung soundbar. My living room is roughly 12 by 12 and I have the soundbar here and the subwoofer beside it pulled out a little bit so you can see where its placement is. I sit maybe 8 to 10 foot away from my television and the soundbar and I use the volume of the soundbar at between 25 and 28. The maximum volume this goes up to is 50. I'll be playing through the 25 to 28 which is what I listen to when I'm watching a movie and then I'll also do with the maximum volume just to let you know what the sound quality of this soundbar is like. What I said, I told you when you picked that kid up you should have delivered him like we had to do. He was cargo. You have always been soft on him. You're the only one I've been soft on. Now don't you worry about Mr. Quill. As soon as we get him back here, I'm going to kill him myself. What we do need to worry about is who else out there wants that orb? Because I obey the ancient laws of my people, the Kree, and punish those who do not. Because I do not forgive your people for taking the life of my father, and his father, and his father before him. A 
thousand years of war between us will not be forgotten. You can't do it! Our government signed a peace treaty! My government knows no shame. These Andarians and your culture are a disease. You will never rule Zander. No. I will cure it! One sound bar, which is roughly 42 inches, with a bag of goodies, and what I assume is the subwoofer. The subwoofer is PS-WH450. On the very top of the subwoofer, you can see that you have a power and Bluetooth LED indicator that lets you know that the power is on and that Bluetooth is on and is working. You do have two-tone black. This is hard material, MDF and plastic. If you turn it over, you can see that there is a vent and you can have a port, or you do have a port, where your sounds come out. On the side, you can see that it's a six and a half inch subwoofer and it does have a cloth grill that goes over it, protecting it and covering that up. On the front you can see where it says Samsung and it has that two-tone finish. Maybe four foot for your power cord, which is not really important because the subwoofer is wireless. The model for the sound bar is HW-H450. You do have a USB connection. You do have the power connection. And from an angle here, you can see your yellow auxiliary input, which is a three and a half millimeter. You do have HDMI in. And on the other side, you have HDMI out and your optical audio connection. You do have a couple touch buttons. You have the power button, the volume up and down, and the F button, which stands for function and it also is your source button. Dolby Digital DTS 2.0 HDMI and it's Energy Star compliant all on the top which is kind of a brushed aluminum finish and then you do have the cloth, cloth mesh over the front and you have your LCD display. Here's the accessories that comes with the soundbar. You have the power brick, which is broken into two pieces. You have the power brick and the actual section that plugs into the sound bar. And then you have this section that plugs into the power brick and into your wall with this funny shaped two prong pin. You also have a three and a half millimeter audio connection in case you wanted to hook an auxiliary device to this sound bar. You also have the owner's manual and a little bit of information about the warranty and how to set this sound bar up. Here is the included remote and you see that it has very basic buttons. Power, volume up, down, source, mute. On the back you do have a round screw where you would remove this plate and put the battery in. Here is the sound bar underneath my 42 inch television that I have in my bedroom and you can see that it's pretty much the same size as the television. It does not take up much room and it's sleek and low profile. 
and I've placed the subwoofer underneath the nightstand located next to my bed. And now you can see the LED screen once I turn the power on to the soundbar. And you'll notice it has some animation. It tells you hello and then it gives you what input that it's selected to. Right now it's on the optical which is the digital input. Pressing the source button you can toggle to auxiliary, HDMI, Bluetooth, and TV Connect. Then you also have the option for a USB device. There are some options for sound effects and you can see that it's standard music, voice, sports, and cinema, which is what I have this set to. You also have a 3D sound option. You can turn that off. You can select it for music, or you can select it for movie, which is what I have that set for. You can also select the treble and the bass as well as the subwoofer volume by pressing the equalizer woofer button on your remote. Ah. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Three, two, one, action! Hey! You got a Coke? Is it a rough day?